And so I testified for the first time, and after the hearing concluded, a representative came up to me, stuck out his hand, shook my hand, introduced himself, and then a little while later in the conversation, he kind of elbowed me and said, when are you going to run for office? And at the time, I completely laughed it off. I was like, well, that's crazy. This is my first time here. I could never do that, Mm -hmm. at least for the foreseeable future. Um, But as I got more involved in the legislative fight in Montana, I found that there really is um, a lack of youth voices in our legislature, especially young voices who are willing to stand up and be unapologetically Mm pro-life. And so I found that there was an open seat in my area, and I decided, you know, if I'm not going to do it now, when am I going to do it? And if I'm not going to do it, then who's going to do it? And my parents just raised me knowing, you know, you can either stand up and do something about it, or you can sit and complain about something. Mm -hmm. And then they told me I was complaining a little too much. So (laughs) I took the hint and threw my hat in the ring, and, you know, I guess the rest is history. That's crazy. What? I guess give everybody here who's listening and tuning in, what's going on with Montana when it comes to abortion? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, Montana, it's in the middle of the country. These are normal people. You know, it's got to be a great pro-life state. But that's really not the case. I mean, we saw certainly during COVID, the Genuity Health uh, study where they actually were giving out chemical abortion pills remotely without a doctor visit against the FDA regulations because Planned Parenthood and Genuity Health were doing a study to see if they could do it. So they thought they'd just like go to like the poor, the Native Americans in Montana to like try it out. I mean, like it, it was crazy that to see that happen. But then I started learning some other stuff about your Like what's the, what's the state laws in Montana like for abortion? Yeah, as you said, Kristen, everyone thinks, you know, Montana, super conservative, super pro-life, just like on Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Um, But in reality, Montana has not been the red state that people kind of envision it as for Mm -hmm. a very long time. In fact, we had a Democrat governor, a very pro-abortion Democrat governor, up until 2020 when we elected um, governor Gianforte, the first pro-life governor to serve Who's in our state. Who's strongly a, pro-life. Very, yes, very strongly pro-life. He's a wonderful pro-life governor. And so up until then, um, the majority of our statewide offices, including the governor's office, were held by pro-abortion Democrats. And we had um, very pro-life majorities in our state house and our state senate that would continually pass good, common sense pro-life legislation, not even radical pro-life legislation. It was just like Um, you know, Born Alive Protection Acts or, you know, very slight um, curtails on abortion, but the governor vetoed them and vetoed them up until the 67th legislative session in 2021 when we were finally able to pass some substantial pro-life legislation. But the battle doesn't stop in our legislative branch. The judiciary in Montana has completely grasped onto the little bit of remaining power that they have left And that is really where the abortion stronghold finds itself in Montana. Back in 1999, there was a decision called Armstrong v. State, which found the liberal Supreme Court, the very pro-abortion Supreme Court, found that because there is an explicit right to privacy in the Montana Constitution, that the right to have an abortion falls under that right to privacy. And so with every good bill we pass, it's constantly enjoined and then struck down under the guise of privacy, which... Obviously, we know to be a false guise and a false premise, but currently we're- You should introduce like a bill like, you know, okaying, I don't know, beating your children or something. Be yes. like, well, wait, mm-hmm. state Supreme Court, I guess we'll have to, you know, just to like yeah. prove a point of like this right to privacy. Yeah, people could do a lot of things in the privacy of their home, yes. but is that okay? Is mm-hmm. that moral to do? Yeah, exactly. No. And this legislative session in 2023, we have a state senator who is fighting that exact fight. He's introduced a bill that would explicitly state that the right to privacy does not include the right to have an abortion. And that bill very recently cleared our state Senate. Um, Today actually is the transmittal deadline in our legislature, so we're halfway there. And within the next month or so, it should have its hearing in the state house We expect that to pass and move to the floor, and we do expect our governor to sign it into law. The question is, what will happen then? Will will the state Supreme Court What will the state Supreme Court do with this bill that's specifically regulating their authority to say whether or not a bill is constitutional when it comes to the issue of abortion? Is your state Supreme Court elected or appointed? Our state Supreme Court is elected, um, and those races are nonpartisan. 
And so people are very unaware of what aware, these judicial yeah. candidates stand for. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously people love to, you know, be, have transparency and know mm. a candidate on the ballot, you know, especially when there's major par- the two major parties have very different stances on abortion and they can know yeah, like life um, or death, life or death. Exactly. And so with the kind of, you know, discrepancy there in the judicial races, it's hard for, you know, especially um, pro-life judicial candidates mm-hmm. to get their message out there in an effective way. So that's definitely where our challenge lies. So what the heck happened to your state this fall? So you and mm-hmm. I spent the day because I was up in, where was I at? Missoula. Missoula. Uh, also liberal town. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Um, uh, I was speaking for a pregnancy center. We we were talking. It was right before the election, and mm-hmm. they kind of mentioned the ballot referendum. But then, you know, I think the big story became about Michigan's ballot referendum. But you guys had your own ballot mm-hmm. referendum, and what would that have done? Yeah. So the ballot referendum that we had this fall was LR one thirty one, which was the Born Alive Infant Protection Act that we passed in the twenty twenty one legislative session. That's the state on supreme. The court struck down Mm -hmm. so then they went back and put it on the ballot Mm -hmm. to say a baby born accidentally during an abortion procedure need deserves medical care life is yes yes and it went to the ballot what happened Mm -hmm. yeah shockingly montana rejected a very common sense ballot referendum that would have protected those babies who are born alive after failed abortions why I believe that it was because of the extreme radical pro-abortion groups that completely misconstrued what this ballot referendum was. They were advertising this to voters as a complete and total ban on abortion. That you could go to any number of websites. They the initiative had like the for the initiative had their own website um, that was just full of complete you know, mm-hmm. misinformation. You know, they like to throw that term around so much when we say things, but this was true, total, and complete misinformation. Um, they were advertising this to be something it completely was not. And so, obviously, the grassroots on the pro-life side, we don't have near the amount of resources or funding or anything that these big pro-abortion bullies do. And yeah. so they were successfully able to misinform Montana voters to make them think that if they voted for this, they were voting for a complete ban on abortion. Well, I mean, I, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that people who advocate for killing babies are also going to lie about mm-hmm. what a ballot referendum is. Mm-hmm.